Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. learners welcome to this online course on legal language legal including general english this is lecture number 8 where you people are going to study synonyms and antonyms i'm dr divya gupta an assistant professor at gla university and today i'm going to take you to the verbosity the legal verbosity basically when it comes to drafting certain things there are lot many ideas in our brain but many times it happens that we fail to draft them in our own you can say in a very elevated manner and an impressive manner but how does it play an important role when you learn those legal maxims and several synonyms because when you go and appear in some papers also for ug level and pg level nowadays in in uh, competitive exams also we get a separate section of synonyms and antonyms and you must know that when it comes to synonyms and antonyms they play an integral role because you cannot repeat the same word time and again rather you would try to come up with different type of words or variety of words with the same meaning so as to lead so as to make your uh, your your draft an impressive one and it may definitely appeal to the audience and the readers Now in this case I would like to tell you about the learning outcomes of this lecture after completing this lecture my dear learners you would be able to learn many things and definitely on the basis of your learning skills while well, talking about the verbals the words the legal maxims the legal terminologies I am pretty much sure that you would be able to generate that critical thinking and you would be able to do justice with your writing so with this note i would like to come forward and take you to the learning outcomes of this lecture the learning outcomes are that like you would be able to understand the the minute difference between or you can say the contextual difference between two words when they are used when the same word is used in two different uh, connotations two different situations giving the different connotations because every word they do have the denotative meaning and connotative meaning now it's up to you when you have to decide that which type of word will be applicable over here so yes you would be able to understand the vocabulary enhancement and above that you would be able to identify synonyms homonyms and antonyms because here i have given you the list i'm going to come up with the list and i'm going to give you a play tricks to make you understand and learn those special synonyms and antonyms related to legal field further you would be able to appreciate the contextual usage of those words same word could be used for similar purpose for example if i say bank there is some kind of sometimes river bank sometimes bank of india so what does it the same word is used but the meaning changes you know the, even the pronunciation is similar but still you have different connotation different meanings to it then further you would be able to analyze the prospects of enhanced writing skills yes enhanced writing skills play an important role because since you would not be using the colloquial method of using those layman language over here there would be a refined one yes you would be able to learn language nuance awareness and expand word repertoire there would be variety of words if you talk about any term there are variety of words which could be used for explaining the similar thing remember okay so i'm going to come up with that list also where you would learn how to deal with it here we are going to develop that critical thinking because critical thinking again plays an important role when you all are from legal background you must have the efficiency to explain and analyze things in your own perception with your own perception and interpret them in a proper manner so yes of course when we are talking about this aspect you must develop the critical thinking in language 
and improve grammar, syntax and lexical resources in that condition. So, you must know about the grammar about I should say the metaphorical, syntactical and uh, patterns because these metaphorical and syntactical patterns actually deals with some aspect of POS types and functions of uh, function and structural category of the sentences, then you would be able to understand the active voice and passive voice. They are really very much important. They actually conglomerate together to form up a wonderful piece of writing. Yes, so you would be able to learn all these aspects after this lecture. And further, I am going to take you to the content that which are the contents since it is a chapter, this is the lecture which will, uh, which you will go through and you will understand about the synonyms, antonyms and homonyms, their practical implications in legal field and sometimes why that word is being included in English and maybe the influence in that condition. So, you would be able to understand the influence on legal language. Further synonyms are there, antonyms are there, homonyms list is there and last but not the least the conclusion. You would be able to know more about those synonyms and antonyms because these things are going to play a vital role in upgrading your credits. Yes, of course, these are really very much important. So, with this note, I am going to take you through the journey of so many words, innumerable words of dictionary, right? Have you ever pondered that how these new words are added to the dictionary? Let us talk about this. How new words are added to the dictionary? The words are added to the dictionary whenever there is like the word comes in print media for more than 200 times. So, when that word comes in print media for more than 200 times, that word automatically is taken to to the dictionary, Oxford dictionary sometimes, sometimes thesaurus dictionary. So, it depends in it depends on that aspect. If it comes in written media, in print media of course, that word would be added to the dictionary because every now and then we see this is the word of the year. This word has been added to the dictionary, new word of the dictionary. So, from where you get that? You get that from the basis of that print media, 200 times printed the word. So, let us move up to the next part where we are going to understand the synonyms, antonyms and homonyms. Now, what are synonyms? First of all, I would like to tell you synonyms are the same words are the words with similar meaning. The words with the similar meaning they are known as similar or synonyms. Antonyms the words which are opposite to each other, opposite to each other they would be called as antonym. Okay? So, good, bad, they are very simple just to make sure that to explain you, yes, this is these are antonyms. Then further, what are homonyms? The words with same spelling sometimes, but different meaning, same spelling, but different meaning. Okay, for example, so we will talk about these things, yeah. So, be ready, be ready, remain alert, agile and aware throughout this lecture if you want to learn more about synonyms, antonyms and homonyms. So, yes, all the words, synonyms, antonyms and homonyms provide basic understanding of these legal terms and but the field of law is complex and multifaceted with each term having its own nuances and applications because because each word is like since law is a complicated word, multifaceted because you cannot segregate, you cannot study law in isolation. Yeah, You would not be able to study law in isolation, you need to connect it with sociology, you need to connect it with political science, you need to connect it with economics, you need to connect it sometimes with regional languages, sometimes with the cultural diversity, many other topics are there, science, maths, yes of course. because because whenever the crime is committed or whenever any kind of offense is there or dispute is there, there has to be a kind of connection with other branches also. So, it cannot be studied in isolation. Therefore, it is a complex and multifaceted topic and therefore, the language has to be very much simple. 
but a little bit of many people say that uh, the language of uh, this uh, legal studies is becomes very ambiguous to understand. But since you have the perfect idea of all those legal maxims, all those legal terminologies, I am 100 percent sure you would be able to do wonders with it, right. So with this note, I am going to take you to the journey where you will learn about synonyms. Why or which kind of influence is there? When we talk about the history in the second lecture also like I have discussed about the history of legal, legal English, I have explained these things that with the influence of French and Latin uh, like uh, you can say uh, impact on our uh, communications, on our uh, uh, day to day life, that is the reason why several synonyms convey the same idea, thought. Some of the examples are of as follows as hi who is the writer. So, let us talk about these uh, terms in short. So, assign, transfer, assign the task to somebody, transfer the task to somebody. Breach, violation, you might have heard about breach of contact, breach of contract. So, that is what do you mean by breach, violation. Then we have clause, we have clause. So, clause is sometimes provision. Further for paragraph we can use article, then yes contract, agreement, default, failure. So, in this condition you must have the information about uh, like uh, the person committed some uh, or he is defaulty character. So, defaulty may be sometimes if we are to going to talk about that person this is defaulty that means a failure or may be committed some kind of negative task. So, lessee, lessee is tenant, lessee is tenant, then promise assurance, promise assurance, right. So, he has assured amount of uh, you uh, like uh, yes, plaintiff has claimed to give the assured amount of 50,000 to the defendant, suppose. So, in that condition you must have this kind of idea. Assured means like promise or confirmed. Now, in this condition you must know that undertaking uh, further void, void is invalid, void is invalid. You must know that it is invalid in that condition. Why is it invalid? Like suppose if I say the whole thing stands invalid if I talk about and void. So, ineffective invalid is ineffective. Then further let us talk about the next one. Here we have the list. Now, here we have the list of all the words which are like not all the words few of them you can say few of them which discuss about these legal terminologies. Now, when it goes to legal terminologies, you must know the first word is lawsuit. The first word is lawsuit. Now, in this condition, lawsuit is legal action. Second, legal action after that, lawsuit could be compared to litigation and legal proceeding. So, that is like three synonyms in that condition, okay. After this slide, after these slides, I am going to give you few examples of MCQs also where you would tell me the answer how to find the correct one. And so, lawsuit means legal proceeding, lawsuit means litigation, lawsuit means legal action. So, in this condition, look at the sentence of legal uh, use, the ongoing legal action against the pharmaceutical company involves the allegation of harmful side, if side effects caused by their medication similar to the Johnson and Johnson Telk litigation. So, on the ongoing legal action against pharmaceutical company, now in this condition you can replace this legal action to lawsuit also. You can talk about litigation also, litigation also right lawsuit litigation and legal action I have already written yeah. So, legal proceeding could be changed could be changed with legal proceedings 
okay so lawsuit could be replaced with three other words remember legal action sometimes it should be litigation and third time legal proceedings this is the way you can make it more refined you can express everything in a much refined manner by using synonyms and antonyms then further we are going to have this defendant this is this is a common terminology if you belong to that legal background you should know about defendant is a person against whom the file is comp uh, fi the complaint is filed so accused respondent offender defendant the accused much like the respondent in the landmark merenda versus arizona case has the right to remain silent during questioning yes so this is what you might have heard about merenda right this is a legal maxim where the defendant has the right to stay quiet if his attorney has not a right if there is a kind of like provision when the defendant is uh, supposed to be raised supposed to be uh, like uh, answer supposed to give the answers in that condition the defendant has the right to stay quiet if his attorney is not available at the moment okay so that is known as miranda right miranda right right so this is the accused the accused you can say the defendant or you can say the respondent maybe offender so these four five words could be replaced with defendant okay so this provides a kind of variety to your speech beta understood everyone it provides a kind of variety to your speech further i am going to take you to the next slide where i am going to come up with some other words like lawyer attorney counsel advocate solicitor barrister these terms are not new but many of them they don't use these terms while drafting anything so remember that while writing and drafting some new documents please make sure to use some refined vocabulary yes so lawyer attorney i told you that miranda rights what is the miranda right when the attorney is not present you can remain quiet the defendant can remain quiet so attorney is the lawyer the counsel the advocate solicitor barrister in the landmark case of miranda versus arizona the defendant was provided with legal counsel before interrogation so here the word counsel is used for the lawyer okay so i i hope the things are getting clear everyone you would be given several choices 1 2 3 4 4 multiple choices would be given and you would be asked to tick the correct answer or maybe while drafting something in long essays legal essays you would be asked in legal reports in juristic writings you would be asked to come up with these with these new words varieties of words while drafting it so please be ready with that then we have verdict verdict is the statement that is actually given by the judge yeah so now you must know that whenever there is a verdict you must really know the importance of or you must know the other words that could be used for verdict right recently i would like to tell you that supreme court cji chandrachur mr chandrachur has given the verdict has allowed to write the verdict or give the verdict in four regional languages currently on 15th august 2023 even narendra das damodar das modi like uh, our, our honorable prime minister he has also appreciated him when he gave this kind of uh, like uh, uh, you can say verdict in other four regional languages otherwise supreme court is supposed to give the verdict only in english language okay so this is a kind of move this is a kind of amendment this is a kind of change that has brought about the uh, proficiency increasing the proficiency and potentiality of our in hindi language in the entire like country okay so this is what verdict verdict now let's speak about verdict what do you mean by that in other words judgment decision ruling decree finding so these are few other words that could be used for verdict jury's decision in the brown versus board of education case led to the desegregation of public schools so 
jury's decision in Pra Brown versus Board of Education's case. Now, in this case, Brown versus Board of Education case actually deals with the uh, with the partiality, with the discrimination of races towards the people from different races were not allowed to go on for classes, so for schools. So, in that condition, this is the kind of case where the verdict was given uh, in that case that jury's decision, what was the jury's decision in Brown versus Board of Education case led to the desegregation of public schools, right. So, this is what the verdict is, verdict is the statement, verdict is the decision, verdict is the ruling, the decree or finding or maybe the judgment, is that very clear everyone? This is what synonyms are all about, they give variety, they make your word splendid, your your work more splendid, much splendid in that condition. Then you must talk about synonyms for witness. Now, in this condition, what is the synonym for witness? Witness is somebody who is the eyewitness suppose if I say. So, it could be termed as different categories, it could be taken up with different words. For example, testifier, for example, deponent, for example, informant, affiant you must have the detailed information about them, ok. So, testifier, deponent, informant, affiant, you must have the information about them, everyone, clear. So, when it comes to witness, you should, you can replace that witness or eyewitness with, with deponent, with informant, with affiant and with testifier. So, let us take up the example. The informant played a crucial role in the prosecution's case in United States versus Anmans. The informant means the eyewitness, the witness. You can use the word deponent. You can use the word testifier. And the word from testifier, a new word comes that is testimonial. So, one who gives the one who gives his statement that turns into testimonial, right. So, root words are also, root words are formed and from that root words, new words are formed, evolves, they, uh, new words uh, evolve most of the time, ok, understood everyone. So, this is the way you can go on, learn something new and suppose if you have some idea, I am just coming up with few more. And then I will tell you that how can we bring, uh, like how can we change the whole system and uh, learn new synonyms by giving, uh, by using eliminating method. When it comes to eliminating method, like how does it work, I will tell you by giving an example, but before that please learn it. Defendant, defendant is against whom the, uh, uh, like the whole thing is filed, accused respondent, offender, suspect. In my previous slide also, I have given an example of defendant also, ok. So, plaintiff, what is the plaintiff? You must know that one who has filed a complaint, that is plaintiff. So, complainant, claimant, prosecutor, practitioner would be the plaintiff. So, you can use the term plaintiff, you can use the term complainant, you can use the term prosecutor, you can use the term petitioner, they will definitely create the same kind of periphery, they will convey the same kind of idea, ok. Then for the evidence that we have already said, proof, testimony, documentation, exhibits. So, they are evidence, evidence could be any object, could be proof. Uh, some CCTV footage would be there, sometimes as testimony, some papers could be there, some uh, kind of like uh, datas and figures could be there for the proof. So, all these things combine together to form up the evidence and on the whole that evidence could be called as proof, that could be called as testimony, that could be called as documentation and that could be called as exhibits. Then last Further, while explaining the whole thing, I will come up and end with this synonym part with jury. So, jury, panel, jury is panel, then jury is a group of judges, ok, group of judges that is panel, tribunal, jurors, bench. 
so for each and every kind of uh, law at law court law courts also we have bar council we have benches that are available for all the kind of legal proceedings in law courts and in uh, supreme courts as well so let's move up to the next part where i promised you that i am going to tell you something more about why and how you can select the correct synonym when it comes to the lectures when it comes to the selection of the correct answer now when it comes to synonyms the words that i am going to give you are suppose the word is a b y s m a l yeah suppose abysmal now in this condition i am going to give you four options the first option now you have to select which one is correct how are you going to do that the first one is if i say accomplice accomplice or if i just give you the answer okay accomplice if i give you limitless or unlimited second if i third if i give you and fourth i am going to give you comrade now how will you be able to find out the correct answer abysmal abysmal uh, now abysmal is a word suppose just try to think about that word which kind of idea does it convey abysmal is something that is unlimited infinite so for unlimited and infinite what is the things that what are the things that are going to come here accomplice 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 one who is accomplice is your friend maybe partner does it match it no companion yes it would not be included in this category companion is not a part of abysmal next comrade it is again a friend so which one is the last which is left out i told you eliminating method first think about the the words which are not in that list if you know the meaning of that so which one is left limitless or unlimited limitless or unlimited this is again a very important way like suppose if i am going to give you few more examples and while giving that example i am going to take you to the next part if i say and give you admonish or if i take some more difficult one can tank cross now again i'm going to give you four options can tank cross now in this condition these four options that i'm going to give you is humorous humorous second one is remorseful third one is quarrelsome and fourth one is dullness right now the word is cantankerous now easy way of learning some points like i'm not telling you that all of a sudden you would be able to give the answers to any question but how are you going to mesmerize them this is important suppose if i give you cantankerous now in this word can the tank be dangerous tank is used in can the tank be dangerous now in this condition where the tanks are used tanks are used in war and when it comes to war that means you are talking about dispute can it can you relate with the answers now you see the answers they are they are humorous humorous is incorrect because we are not talking about something which is which is lively or which gives you happiness cantankerous further i'm talking about remorseful grief no it is not like that we are not talking about remorse third we are not talking about we are talking about 
tank tank is used in war war is used war is dangerous and leads to dispute so that is quarrelsome i think it is correct yes of course it is correct and dullness of course is also wrong so we are not talking about dullness remorsefulness or humorous the right answer is quarrelsome right so this is how you are going to learn them look i am not saying that it would rome was not built in a day that is for sure even you people are not going to mesmerize each and everything within a day before the last exam before the last day of the exam you need to work hard you need to actually go through each and everything one by one maybe five words or six words or 10 words daily so that and with with some kind of logic so that you can keep it in your brain okay so you must remember these aspects how can you create a shortcut of remembering of all these things clear now i'm going to give you few more examples like if i say opulent if i say opulent like now opulent i'm going to give you four more topics for that meanings of this now opulent if i say fake if i say gloomy if i say rich or selfish so opulent is something someone who is who has opulent uh you can say lifestyle opulent lifestyle luxurious lifestyle right so how are you going to uh, connect with fake fake is fraudulent i hope you know this thing fraudulent one thing that is fake which is fraudulent which is not trustworthy you can say right which is not real then gloomy obviously gloomy will not come in this category because we are not talking about dullness or grief melancholic tone lament no we are not talking about gloomy that is opulent further rich yes of course rich is the correct answer because opulent needs towards luxury opulent leads to luxury and that is the reason rich is the correct answer and then selfish is incorrect again so that is the way you can find out some new way of learning them what if i say morose morose and if i give again four and the word comes from the moron word like suppose if i say flatter some first word second word if i say friendly third word if i say again gloomy let's say and fourth savvy morose word is actually if i talk about if you want to correlate with your understanding morose that is kabhi happy sometimes happy sometimes sad so if my you might have heard about that story of kabhi khushi kabhi gham let's correlate with that understanding let's correlate with that understanding kabhi khushi that means kabhi happiness and kabhi sad suppose if you are going to correlate them and keep them in your brain so how are you going to keep that morose that is if i say that is sad part now look at this thing Fra flatter it is not about flattery that we are talking about third friendly second friendly no it is not like that next what is the most important thing that we are referring here i told you kabhi sad kabhi happy so remember morose will definitely check the validity with gloomy and savvy is absolutely wrong understood everyone so this is how you are going to correlate the meaning and its words so they they will definitely be then only you will be able to create the balance between them okay then further we can talk about some other words if i say transcend now this is your task for the day transcend tell me which word is correct eclipse or abort i'm not going to give the answer to this question you people will be give me the answer of that one if i say fizzle fizzle and blunder so now you have to tell me the answer which one is correct 
and the next word drivel at the end of this lecture I will definitely give you the answer but before that I am leaving you with this question that which one is correct intelligent then judicious sane and blather so one two three four drivel you have to tell me the answer transcend now transcend now you have to tell one two aborts three fizzle and fourth blunder now you have to tell me the answer by the end of this lecture i am going to ask you what is the meaning what is the synonym of transcend and drivel it's your task by the end of this lecture i will definitely ask you whether you would be able were able to find out the answers or not so with this note i'm going to take you to the next level of antonyms where antonyms are the words which stands opposite to each other now when it comes to antonyms part remember my dear learners that these things also play an important role because whenever there is a defendant you need to have plaintiff right whenever there is a reward there has to be a punishment okay so obviously whenever the guilty is there there has to be someone who is blameless or who is innocent okay so without day you cannot have night okay so that clearly indicates the validity the importance of antonyms in legal transcription yes so let's start with the first word that is the most important word guilty guilty is someone who is actually the culprit you can say so guilty is in uh, the opposite to it is innocent blameless acquitted exonerated exonerated so the defendant was declared innocent in the trial of state versus simpson so you must know that in the trial of this you have understood that the defendant was declared innocent innocent means opposite of guilty of guilty right opposite of guilty so this is what innocent is the opposite of guilty is innocent further i'm going to take you to the next one that is prosecution in our previous uh, slide also uh, we discussed about prosecution legal prosecution that is lawsuit sometimes so now we are going to talk about the prosecution and now we are going to talk about the antonym of that defense then exoneration acquittal acquittal so the acquittal of the defendant marked at the end of the prosecution's case in state versus johnson the acquittal of the defendant so finally the meaning is very much clear and it stands opposite to prosecution further what is the meaning what is the antonym of conviction conviction is something where the defendant's acquittal let's talk about conviction acquittal exoneration vindication so defendant's acquittal came as the surprise in the case of people versus turner so here this is the opposite of conviction acquittal there are few more exercises that i would be coming up with negligence the opposite of these negligence is diligence carefulness prudence caution okay then further okay now suppose if i ask you the question who will tell me that what word stands with this negligence negligence when somebody is neglecting something so you have to tell the opposite of it negligence is it diligence or carefulness prudence or caution so what is the opposite to it yes of course maybe yes of course all of them so you must talk about and think about those words which stands opposite to it first of all go to the meaning if you understand the meaning you can definitely come up with the antonym so negligence is one who doesn't pay attention one who neglects all the things and the opposite to it is being very careful being intelligent and possessive prudence being cautious being diligent most of the time so opposite to that negligence is these plaintiff plaintiff what is the opposite to it 
plaintiff is defendant plaintiff is defendant opposite antonym right respondent accused offender so they are the you can say synonym of defendant almost they all are synonyms of defendant and opposite to plaintiff then appellant then appellant is appealee respondent defendant and accused these are few more categories of the antonyms the list of antonyms further we are going to talk about homonyms how these homonyms play an important role and what are these homonyms homonyms are those words which can be used with same spelling but different meaning okay same spelling but different meaning in the beginning i left you with this question that what is the meaning of counsel when it comes to the usage because on the basis of the usage contextual meaning context the change the meanings are uh, also change and on the basis of that uh, like words in context of certain things it the meaning changes like for example counsel the meaning advice or guidance counsel and second one is counsel meaning a lawyer or attorney okay so in that condition you must know the first one is advice and the second one is lawyer or attorney clear understood everyone so how can you use them like the defendant sought legal counsel from his attorney over here legal counsel is what from his attorney who provided here this is advice because attorney is actually the the lawyer right so here you have understood the defendant sought the legal counsel which is used for advice from his attorney to provide who provided valuable counsel on how to handle the case okay so valuable advice on how to handle the case you can talk about this legal as a lawyer so now the meaning changes the defendant sought legal counsel from his attorney who provided valuable counsel on how to handle the case so at one place this is a lawyer at the second place this is an advice so this means the word changes okay right so further we have penalty penalty is what meaning a punishment right that is a penalty and the second one is penalty meaning a fine so sometimes penalty means the punishment sometimes penalty means the fine monetary fine could be so the penalty for the white collar crime included both a prison sentence as well as substantial financial penalty so here it is fine and here the penalty is punishment okay so the punishment for the white collar crime included both the prison state sentence as well as the substantial financial penalty now in this condition one penalty stands for punishment and the other penalty stands for fine monetary fine clear so suppose if i say if somebody uh, goes with a breach of contract or somebody complains against the breach of contract in in suppose civil law in civil cases the penalty of the penalty of 5000 fine to be paid or penalty of you can say 5000 financial penalty would be levied on that person so in that condition the fine of 5000 would be levied on that means we are talking about monetary fine okay so this is how you are going to understand the meaning and difference of their context while using them in a different sentences maybe in the same sentence most of the time again we are going to discuss bar b a r bar bar is the legal profession and we have bar counsel we have bar counsel right so you must know about this thing bar counsel then bar an obstacle or prohibition 
you must talk about this that is an obstacle or prohibition. He stood as a bar in front of the or uh, yes, um, several barriers were kept on the road as a bar to restrict the passers by. So, as a bar that is uh, if I say several barriers were placed on the at the accidental place to restrict to several barriers were placed at the accidental place to bar the free flow to bar the free flow of the passers by passers passer by or you can say the uh, free flow of the pedestrians yes that that will be much better uh, several barriers were placed at the accidental place as a bar as a bar to restrict the free flow of the now this is the whole sentence which gives you the indication of bar so bar is the restriction remember bar is a kind of obstacle prohibition so several barriers were placed at the accidental place as a bar to restrict the free flow of the pedestrians clear now we will talk about the jurisdiction, jurisdiction is legal authority and a specific geographic area jurisdiction. So suppose if I say, uh, if I talk about the particular Manpuri comes in the jurisdiction of this particular uh, uh, area. So when it comes to that jurisdiction that which area comes in your jurisdiction. So that means I am talking about specific geographic area. Okay. So, which area comes in your jurisdiction? Suppose if I say, so which kind of question am I going to ask? That which area comes in your jurisdiction? That means I am going to ask about the geographical periphery to which you belong, the geographical area to which it belongs. So remember, jurisdiction is like that. Further, plead. Plead is to request, and to in this is to make a plea or request. Yes, and the second plead is to enter a legal plea, guilty or not guilty. Okay. So, that is pleading sometimes. So, sometimes these, these two words are different with each other. Then we have homonyms, words with multiple meanings or interpretation in legal context. For example, counsel, yes, we have discussed this one, legal advice, counsel, a lawyer or attorney. We have already seen the usage of that one. And now I think you would be able to give me the answer of that word, counsel. Brief, Brief is a legal document presenting an argument because in this uh, uh, we have discussed in the pre in the further lectures. I will discuss about brief documentation. Yeah, brief writing also. Brief writing. Right. So be ready with that kind of like uh, work where I would explain how to go on with brief writing and juristic writings. Yes. Further, we have brief, short, and concise. So. Teachers have asked the students of law to write a brief summary of the case or uh, the brief uh, uh, you can say if, uh, if I talk about the legal uh, students, yes law students I would certainly say that, uh, that uh, teachers have asked the students to prepare a brief writing on the case. So that will be the legal document uh, represented for the arguments. So, Sentence is sentence a legal punishment and sentence is grammatical unit of words. So, in that condition you must know that which kind of uh, when it goes to legal grammatical unit of words you must know about functional and structural category. 
okay functional and structural category where the sentences would be divided into uh, several parts if i talk about functional they are assertive if i talk about them let me write down over here and then i'll explain it to you yes so when it comes to functional sentence they are like assertive declarative they are uh, imperative exclamatory optative many others because it is a function of order command request blessings like that whereas in the other field when it is a structural part it will tell about the simple complex and compound sentences so they are sentence s e n t e n c e but when it comes to sentence in legal terminology that means the punishments that are given to it the punishments that we are talking about the law the in, the information of landmark cases and the punishments that were levied on it so this is what the legal punishment what is the judgment sentence what is the sentence of the judgment so that is the legal punishment that god that uh, judge has given you or the verdict that god, god uh, that uh, judge has given you that passed further jurisprudence let's talk about this jurisprudence if i talk about certain other synonyms because now it's a amalgamation of synonyms antonyms and several other things so let's see jurisprudence the meaning is legal philosophy antonym is illegality okay so legal philosophy illegal legality and the usage the course covered various schools of jurisprudence exploring different legal theories this is very much important when the word jurisprudence is used you must know that we are talking about legal philosophy whereas when it comes to uh, antonym it is illegality then further we talk about statute what are statutes statutes are the law and legislations that are already laid before and on the basis of those statutes we create a new one right now in this condition this is law legislation that is synonym and then we have anarchy that is antonym and further in that condition you must know that a new statute was enacted to address emerging issues in online privacy so what is that the new statute was enacted to address emerging issues in online privacy when it comes to online privacy this is something very much uh, efficient nowadays so that is statute ki hum baat karte hain when we talk about statute it is all about law and legislation now we can talk about common law what is common law common law is actually case law or precedent based laws any kind of like suppose if i say environmental protection act in 1856 now this is this has become the kind of like statute or common law on which like we can definitely talk about several others case laws uh, yes uh, let me talk about some case law that was an act that i was talking about environmental protection act uh, if i talk about case laws we have uh, landmark cases and we have recent cases so you must know that when it comes to landmark cases and recent cases there is uh, like there are many cases uh, like that so you must know about common laws they are case laws precedent based law civil law so in common law systems decisions made by judges in previous cases are crucial for shaping current legal interpretations so there are many many case laws many uh, common law systems which has created that legal precedences to frame to create the framework so that the others can stand on it the other cases could be resolved on the basis of this so further go to legal precedent legal precedent i have i've been using this particular term many times legal precedent is the uh, like uh, yes the case law on which we the judicial precedent could be based upon so let's see legal innovation is the opposite to it sometimes we change sometimes we change the system okay so they are innovation sometimes instead of going on with legal precedent yes sometimes legal innovations are also there so they are antonyms to it and uh, the lawyer argued the current case should follow the legal precedent set by the similar case in the past and so you can fight against you can fight for the justice based on the decisions made in the previous cases treating it as a legal precedents further constitution this is something very much important constitution is charter fundamental law it the opposite to it is anarchy the constitution outlines the fundamental rights and responsibilities of citizens in the country 
So, we have right so many rights, rights to right to vote, right to property, right to property, right uh, to inherit, right to inherit, then we have right to speak, right to freedom, right to freedom, many others are there, many others are there. So, in that condition you have to understand that this is constitution which gives you the fundamental rights, where fundamental rights are written where according to which we work out. Then we have case laws, I have already explained about this, this is case law. Common law precedent based law, in that condition statutory law are there, the judge referred to relevant case law to support his decision in the courtroom. So, in that condition government has actually given us the case law, support the decision in the courtroom and in that condition this is the meaning and then further legal system. Now, legal system is when it comes to judicial system, judicial system, lawlessness that means legal system with the judicial like matter we are going to study, this is judicial. When it goes to opposite to it, remember this is lawlessness, this is lawlessness where we are not following any rules and regulations. Then further we have the fair impartial legal system is essential for upholding justice in any society. Yes, of course, we cannot go without the uh, without following any principles, any legal principles. So, you must know about this. Further, we have civil law. In my separate lecture, I have distinguished between civil law, distinguished between civil law and criminal law and criminal law, right. So, that lecture would be sufficient enough to tell you the difference between civil law and criminal law. But now the civil law synonym to it is private law and the antonym to it is criminal law. And on the other hand, if I talk about the criminal law, the opposite to criminal law is civil law and the synonym to it is penal law, right. So, breaking criminal law can result in penalties such as imprisonment or fines. Civil law deals with disputes between individuals or organizations often involving the issues like breach of contracts and property sometimes. So, contract law, tort law and property law, these are three very important laws where we discuss them, but we do not know what are the synonyms of this and what is the, what are the antonyms of this. So, I am going to just uh, wind it up in a very short way, so that you can get the entire details in the whole manner. Contract law is law of contracts, where is the opposite to is this contractual breach, tort law is law of wrongs, some wrong things and whereas, the tort law opposite to it is compliance. Further, property law is there. This property law, the synonym to it is real estate law and antonym to it is property abandonment. So, you must know that all these words, if we are going to use them in your colloquial speech, you must try to come up with that answer. Property law governs the ownership and use of real person property. Yes. So, now we have administrative law, international law, legal ethics, regulatory law, deregulation, global law as international law, I told you, isolationism, legal ethics, professional ethics, unethical behavior. So, in this condition obviously, while learning those uh, new words, you will definitely uh, can definitely work out very well while going up with all these different examples. So, at the end I would like to tell you about more about this, uh, these, these terminologies because when you go through these words and phrases, they cover various aspects of the study and practice of law. They are often encountered in the LLB programs and many students who are working very well with that legal programs, you people might be knowing about these antonyms and synonyms very well. So, legal discussions in courtrooms, text rooms are required. Then you must know about the students develop an awareness how subtle changes in language achieved through synonyms. So, all of you can be perfect if you know variety of words. Remember each and every word has denotative and connotative meaning. Second, it changes according to the context, the meaning changes according to the context. So, try to use the appropriate word at the appropriate place. 
Last but not the least, I would like to ask you the question, what was my question in my previous class? In my previous slide, I told you that you people are going to tell me about the meaning of two words. And in that condition, I gave you the words, which were they? I think like they were, yes, uh, transcend and the other one was, uh, there was drivel, right? So, the transcend, what is the meaning of transcend? Yes, tell me everyone. I left it this question with you people because you were supposed to give me the answer. Transcend means eclipse. Transcend means eclipse. I am going to write down over here so that later on you can definitely refer to it. Eclipse. And what is the meaning of uh, the other word drival? The meaning of drival word is, let me write down over here, the meaning of drival word is blather. Blather, right? Drival and blather. Okay, so with this note, obviously, I am Dr. Divya Gupta signing off for now. But before that, I would like to show you the references that I have, uh, the books that I have referred over here. And in this, you can definitely go through these dictionaries of legal usage, Bar Barron's Law Dictionary, then uh, Black's Dictionary, then for the elements of style, Dictionary of Modern Legal Usage, because these things are going to help you out in learning new things new words, new terminologies, new legal maxims. Without that, obviously, without creating a foundation, you would not be able to create your own castle, okay, castle of success. So, believe me, if you want to learn, if you want to mesmerize new words, do it on daily basis. Do it on daily basis, try to learn, learn them properly, yes. So, thank you everyone, thank you for now. I am Dr. Divya Gupta once again, wishing you all the best for your bright and successful future. Keep learning, keep mesmerizing all these synonyms, antonyms regularly. Yes, thank you.